Hello and welcome to the second video of converting Tronxy X5SA to a decent printer series. This time around we will be talking about printed parts, bed and z-axis assembly. But before that a little appendix to previous video. Why not buy just Amazon Returns Tronxy X5SA and fix it? Well. This printer has some design flaws that simply cannot be fixed without changing drastically a couple of main components. First of them being in the entire bed mounting system that just hangs on 10x10 aluminium profiles. Second is the gantry that is kinda hard to make square. Third is the entire frame rigidity. And fourth is the acrylic parts that tends to break. While the trunks has improved their design over the years, it is still not in a spot where I could recommend it for long-lasting operation. In fact, acrylic parts is what failed for the previous owner of this machine. And that brings us to the second appendix. This isn't easy to build 3D printer. And while it was literally my first custom build, I am an electromechanical engineer and I have experience with building stuff. When I was disassembling it, I noticed that previous owner managed to bend and even break a couple of screws. Some of them were loose, some of them were over tightened to the point I had to use the drill to extract them. Plenty of them were mismatched and scratched the extrusions. I'm not saying you have to have IKEA assembly professional certificate in order to build it, but you will definitely need to have basic tools, common sense, and ability to follow instructions. So let's get started. Yes, there is an official guide on how to assemble VisiBot, but I have found that using 3D CAD model was actually easier for me to reference as I could rotate and inspect individual parts to make sure I'm doing it right. Both of them are available in the GitHub repository and I will link it in the description below. From the official guide I only took a list of parts that I needed to print, order of building and a belt route. Last thing that I suggest is to make a list of required screws and this is where assemblies, BOM and STL catalog comes in handy. It is still a tedious process but it will vary depending on variation of the build you want to make. For example I went with the dual Z motors and just two motors for the XY gantry. In every folder inside you will find a screenshot of the specific part, such as this entire bed frame and below a list of parts required. Make yourself a list of bolts and nuts from it and add it to your shopping list as you go through all of these parts. One tip I can give is that you will need a lot more M4 bolts with a length of 10mm compared to what is listed in BOM. Thankfully I could substitute some of them with original Tronxy but I will still need a lot of them to fix frame rigidity. Unfortunately I did not record assembling mainframe, however this part is rather easy and you should do it according to the official manual. This is basically assembling main extrusions with just a couple of screws. Before you start assembling bed, print 4 renal rod bearing mounts. If you are using stock smooth rods, you will need to print LMU8 mount. Another thing to print is 2 lead screw supports. Bed is actually one of the easier things to build and this is where you will need those force extrusions you have ordered. Connect those extrusions to form rectangle as shown in the video by either using aluminium corners or internal corner jointer or just print corners yourself like I did. It's not the best solution but it works. Prepare yourself a couple of allen keys and line up assembled printed parts then start mounting them to the frame. Don't worry about aligning them just yet. Screw them just enough so they don't fall off like shown in the video. There will be a time to align them with the printed tool. And just a tip, print all the parts before assembling the printer so you won't have to wait each time before you assemble something. 
Of course, you will also need an actual heat bed mounts, so you'll have two choices here. Either print six bed mounts for springs or six bed mounts for silicone stands. I have printed version for silicone stands and printed mounts from TPU simply because I did not receive all the springs from the Amazon returns. This is something you will have to check. And while it's not the best solution, but it works for now. Just a quick tip on how to use the 3D CAD model viewer online to check if you have assembled everything correctly. Open up this link from the description. It will take you to the online Fusion 360 viewer. Give it a few moments to load up. From there, you might want to enable model browser in order to hide enclosure and other parts that might be in a way. With a left click, you can rotate it and with a mouse scroll, you can zoom in and out. If you click a middle mouse button, you will be able to pan the whole model. Once you get print bed assembled, work your way up to mounting smooth rods, stepper motors and lead screws. As for the printed parts, assuming you will reuse Trunksy smooth rods, you will need to print 10 more things. Four bottom mounts for the 8mm smooth rod, marked as 5 to 5, because this is the length of the stock's X5SA rod. Four upper mounts, marked as 5 to 5, and two dual motor mounts. Let me show you in the model viewer which parts I'm talking about. Assemble just the bottom mounts and slide the smooth rods into them. Then try to slide the entire bed on the smooth rods. I'll be honest, I have struggled with this part quite a bit. This will be a good time to align them with the print tool that can be found in the repository in folder alignment tools and it's marked as a Z alignment tool for 8mm rod. This tool should be screwed to double extrusions from the front side in order to correctly space the bed. Once you get the bottom part done, mount the upper smooth rod mounts and align them in the same manner as you did with the bottom with the exact same tool. You will need to do this a couple of times to get it right. When it comes to rear smooth rods, there is no alignment tool. You will just have to make sure they have exact same distance to the front mounts on each side and they are roughly spaced on a bed support made from extrusions. Try to slide down the entire bed up and down to make sure it runs smoothly. Now it is time to mount the motor mounts exactly in the middle of bottom smooth rod supports. Use a ruler here and mark the middle point. Then roughly attach the motor mount and check again from each side if spacing is equal. Once you make sure distances are equal, screw the motor mount tightly to the extrusion and screw in the motor to the mount. Attach the flexible coupler to the motor shaft. Don't tighten it just yet as we will need to put the lead screw in it. Just a quick tip, detach the lead screw support from extrusion bed and slide it to the lead screw as it will be easier for you to attach it to the bed afterwards. Before you tighten everything up, make sure the entire bed goes smoothly from the bottom to the top. Once you have checked that, screw everything tightly and check again if it still runs well. If not, repeat the alignment process. I had to fix it a few times until I was satisfied with the result. Don't worry if something goes wrong. As long as you haven't physically damaged anything, you will be able to realign things at any given time as there's plenty of room to operate on both bed and the entire Z-axis. Make sure to grease everything afterwards as this is why I'm wearing neutral gloves since everything is covered in grease. One more word of advice. My smooth rods slightly sticked out in the upper mounts and they were making a collision with the gantry bar. So I have used 8.5 mm drill on the bottom mounts to make them go a bit lower. And this is it. 
your bed and that axis should be ready to go. Hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in comments down below if something wasn't clear enough. In the next video I will be showing you how to mount the linear rails to the extrusions and possibly the entire gantry.